Hey gang, it's JC and this is your Daily Dose for Wednesday, August 18th, 2010, a cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood, which is even more beautiful these days because they passed that anti-smoking ban. Way to go, our friends in Brentwood. Somebody said, uh, you keep saying that uh, you can get the Daily Dose now on the mobile phone. What app do I use? You don't use an app. You just go to jconthewine.com and... Hit the button and it plays. Okay, so jcontheline.com is all you need to know. Dave Murray's weather forecast down in the corner. You can look at the old stuff, archives, top of the page. But we do run all of the eye candies along the bottom of this screen, too. So go nuts as we roll on with our 15-month paid vacation here at jcontheline.com. Up to 985 friends. On Facebook, 985. Will we break 1,000 today? Let's see what happens. All right. Social networking through Facebook and Twitter has now officially overtaken porn as the most popular activity on the Internet. And on top of that, texting now has passed both email and phone calls and is now the most popular form of communication in the United States. That and rolling down your window and giving the finger to the guy in the car next to you for cutting you off. Radio Nazi, Dr. Laura Schlesinger is quitting radio in December. Can't happen fast enough. Debt relief services. If you listen to the radio at all in St. Louis, you are bombarded with like 3,000 of these things a day. Debt relief services is what they call themselves. Radio is so desperate that they are taking these things for like 10 bucks a holler just to get any sort of money, any sort of revenue generated. But unfortunately, in doing so, they have sold their souls and they have misled their audiences because all of these debt relief services are as crooked as the day is long. And now the government has stepped in and there are new laws that will be enacted starting in October. No longer will they be able to get upfront fees from you. They have to provide you with a timetable and they have to tell you, they have to be specific as to what it is that they're going to do for you. Because right now what happens is you call one of these debt relief services and the first thing they do is they say, all right, send us all this money up front and stop making your payments. Okay, and so what happens is is they get their money, but your creditors immediately go, hey, wait a minute, you stop the payments and then your credit score goes in the tank even further. These things are all crooked. The good news is with these new laws, it may put them all out of business. Or it might be like uh, the banks who had all those new credit card regulations passed, and before the ink was even dry on the document, they figured out a way to get around most of it. Well, I told you Blagojevich would walk, and I was pretty close. Uh, They were not able to reach a verdict on 23 of the 24 counts. Scott Fitzgerald, the prosecutor in the case up in Chicago, is already, well, he's saying they're going to start picking a jury next week for the retrial I don't, you know, spending even more money on this? People of Illinois, I think you're getting ripped off at this point. By the way, the jury was deadlocked 11 to 1. It was one woman who, every time they played something, every time the other 11 people looked over a document and said, okay, we reach a consensus on this, everybody was nodding their head, and she was like, "Uh uh-uh, it proves just the opposite thing. So apparently it was very frustrating for the other jurors. One woman was responsible for this mistrial. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what I know about trials. I've only been in one trial that actually went all the way to a jury and a decision and the whole thing like that. And that was an incident that occurred, oh, guess what was this, about 17 years ago now, where I was doing a charity appearance at a live broadcast uh, at a hotel down near the ballpark (coughs) on the night of a baseball game. And uh, these two goons, known as Stephen D.C., um, had one of their guys jump out of a crowd and jump on me. And then he called the police and said that I had hit him. And there was a big lawsuit two years later after being ravaged in the local media, and particularly the Riverfront Times, which is why, why I don't speak to Ray Hartman. <coughs> um, and I could go on for, for hours on that story alone. But uh, anyhow, um, this thing went to a uh, jury. And ended up in court two years later. It was a seven-day, I'm sorry, six-day trial, Monday through Friday, and then the following Monday. And there was one woman on the jury who was probably in her late 50s, had long, stringy gray hair and ugly glasses, and wore a Keishi t-shirt to court every day. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about that. 
There's a lot of people in this town who believe that I ruined Keishi by either going there or leaving. So I was like, damned if I did and damned if I don't. There were a lot of people who never liked the idea of me being there in the first place. And there was a whole bunch of other people who thought I somehow betrayed the great KC-95 by leaving. And in fact, I didn't really leave. It was just, it was a mess. So anyhow, this woman wears a KC t-shirt every day. Long story made short, if that's possible at this point. Um, after the trial was over, I found out from a couple of the jurors that it, it was that one juror who held up the entire proceeding in the deliberation. They wanted to give me a million dollars in that lawsuit, and she was like, nah, 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 nah. And finally, it got knocked down to the arbitrary number of $370,000 is what I was awarded in that case. But it just shows you how just one person can screw up the entire proceedings, and it really calls into question our American legal system because how often in this day and age can you get 12 people in a room from all different walks of life, all different socioeconomic backgrounds. How in the world do you get 12 people to agree on anything? Anything. I'm not sure you could get five people in a room to agree on anything. So, a lot of questions and more questions and answers. And we'll see where this whole Blagojevich thing ends up going. Somebody tried to torch Russ Carnahan's campaign headquarters in South City overnight yesterday. They have a 50-year-old suspect in custody. Hmm. Tea partier? Member of the Ed Martin campaign? Let's see. The Arch Grounds. So they got 49 architects together, including Mike Brady, to uh, put forth all these different uh, pie-in-the-sky ideas about what they're going to do with the Arch Grounds and to make it all pretty and more commercial. They have been trying to get just one simple walkway over that busy traffic on Memorial Drive for 25 years, why should I believe that this $400, $500 million project will ever come to fruition? You can't even get a walkway over the traffic for a quarter century. All right, I've talked about phone apps before, and some of my favorites include Wonder Radio, that's with a U, Wonder Radio, Tune In Radio, which is also good, allows you to record two hours at a time, Dragon Dictation, oh my God, Dragon Dictation, will change your life. You just hold your cell phone up and uh, and bark whatever it is you want to say into this thing. It converts it into text. You cut and paste it. You can send it as an email, put it in Word, whatever. Dragon Dictation, MLB. Um, now we have a new phone app, which is free, by the way, and it's available now, that detects what store you just walked into and automatically gives you free coupons. It's called Shopkick, S-H-O-P-K-I-C-K. Privacy experts aren't crazy about it, but nobody else seems to be complaining right now. New University of Chicago study. Having a wife or husband, even one that drives you out of your mind, is still good for you and your stress levels. Man, just when you think everything's guaranteed, Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig's disease? Now they're saying Lou Gehrig may not have had <laughs> Lou Gehrig's disease. He had a series of concussions because he played other sports, including football. And it was back in the day when Gerald Ford played, which also explains a lot, where the, the, the concussive capability or you know prevention wasn't so good. It was just like leather. You ram your head into a 250-pound linebacker, and that was the end of it. You know? And sometimes if you have a lot of concussions, you can start to produce symptoms that are symptomatic of Lou Gehrig's disease. Lou Gehrig may not have had Lou Gehrig's disease. All right, got a lot of people back in school right now, particularly college freshmen. So those people were born in 1991 or 1992, and because of that, now you got to look and say, oh, wait a minute, they have no idea who Rodney King is, for example. They only know Clint Eastwood as a director, not as an actor, certainly not as Dirty Harry. Hardly any of them have ever used or even known about a corded phone, you know, telephone with a cord on it. And they have absolutely no memory of Dan Quayle. Eh, so there's something good to come out of it after all. Blondie putting out their first album in many, many years. Blondie going on the road in November with the Pretenders. That's the Hot Flash Tour. Brett Favre, according to some sources up in Minneapolis, is going to come back and play with the Minnesota Vikings. The Vikes are not on the Rams' schedule this year. They already played them in preseason last weekend. 
That plastic surgeon in California that did all those surgeries on Heidi Montag, I think he did something like 10 surgeries in one day on this chick. Uh, Paulina Portskova, I, I, I got to give her credit for this one. I'd like to steal it, but I just can't do it. Paulina Portskova said that uh, Heidi Montag now, after all that surgery, looks like a pool float. That's pretty good. Anyhow, he accidentally drove off a cliff and was killed on Monday, the plastic surgeon. I don't know who Heidi Montag is supposed to go to now to see about the warranty on all that work. Well, most women, I don't think they have any idea, absolutely no idea what they're putting on their faces every day. And we're talking about makeup. You know, we have six very, very nasty ingredients in everyday cosmetics. We're going to list them for you right now. Only six Lanolin, also known as grease from animal fur. You know how if you don't wash your hair for a couple of days, it sort of like produces its own oily film? Well, that's what lanolin is, except it comes from sheep. And it's used in shaving cream, lotion, shampoo, makeup remover, and lipstick. So you're putting oil from hairy, greasy sheep on your lips. Shark liver oil. It's used in moisturizer, sunscreen, lip balm, and bath oil. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a certain number of women out there who uh, won't perform certain acts, shall we say, when it comes to sex at time. I don't like the taste, you know, that sort of stuff. Um, maybe if they know that they're putting sweaty, greasy residue from sheep on their lips, maybe they're not going to stop wearing lipstick. But now you can get them on a, on a technical point. Shark liver oil, used in moisturizer, sunscreen, lip balm, and bath oil. Dead algae. If you used an exfoliating body scrub this morning, chances are you rub dead algae all over yourself. Fish scales. Ground-up fish scales are added to nail polish to make it shimmer. Cholesterol from animal fat, popular ingredient in moisturizer. Whale vomit. Whales produce a waxy oil in their stomachs that uh, protects the inside of their stomachs, but when they get too much of it, they just puke it up. And then we take it and we make perfume out of it. As a matter of fact, it's one of the ingredients in the world's best-selling fragrance, Chanel Number no. 5. Wow. All right. Video Village this week. Woody Allen, who performed in St. Louis back in the day, we interviewed him for a movie called Everyone Says I Love You. And watch Larry and Julius, by the way in the intro to this piece. J.C.'s Wayback Machine, going back to 1996 for the commercials that they ran for the introduction of a radio station by the name of Alice at 104.1. Not necessarily news, Steve Spagnolo, J.C.'s Eye Candy today. Nothing better than uh, watching cats do stupid stuff. And today we have kittens. Um, I'm not saying they're on a treadmill. They're sort of near a treadmill, but it's pretty funny stuff. Tomorrow... Some very interesting statistics, numbers, if you will, on the salary history of Stan Musial. You have no idea. So that's coming up tomorrow. That's it, JC's Daily Dose for Wednesday, August 18th, 2010. A cooperative venture with Mind Active in beautiful downtown Brentwood. In the meantime, we've beaten this one to death. Have a good one. See you later. Bye.